A couple of years ago, the empty shell of the old Senate Theater here in Detroit was sold for back taxes. The buyer was a group of people who wanted a place where they could hear again the exciting sound of a mighty theater organ. Immediately, they set to work, tearing out the old ticket office, cleaning up and remodeling the outside. Inside, there was even more work to be done. Water to be pumped out of the basement, and big holes to be cut in the walls so that the sound could fill the auditorium. This old theater, like many of them in the 20s, had once had an organ of its own, but with the decline of that era, the organ had been taken out and the walls plastered over. So the holes had to be opened up again. The devoted members of the Detroit Theater Organ Club gave up their free time on evenings and weekends to do most of the work themselves. In addition, they guaranteed loans totaling $20,000 for the necessary materials and other items needed for the renovation. Some of them who are pretty good with hammers and saws get busy here putting up the studding for the partition that will enclose the pipe chambers up on the old stage. The idea of a club devoted to the sound of the mighty theater organ was born back in 1960 when 12 people got together and formed the Detroit Theater Organ Club. Today it has over 200 members and it's chartered as a nonprofit corporation by the state of Michigan. There is a national organization, the American Association of Theater Organ Enthusiasts, which has chartered some 22 chapters throughout the United States. But the Detroit Club, which is an independent one, is the only one in the country that owns its own theater expressly for the enjoyment of organ music. A low circular stage is being built to house the console of the organ. Filled in with plaster and debris from the holes that were knocked out of the walls, it's being outlined by a neat brick wall. Like most of the rest of the construction work, this too was done by the members. The amateur bricklayer at work here is George Orbitz, who is a test engineer at Bendix Research and one of the most important members of the club because he's the one who owns the organ. A few years ago, when the Fisher Theater was closed down as a movie house and extensively remodeled as a legitimate theater, George bought the mighty Wurlitzer that had delighted its patrons back in the late 20s and 30s. It took George and three or four friends about five weeks to disassemble and move the organ to a warehouse where it was stored for a couple of months until the club temporarily rented the old Iris Theater. There, the organ was set up for a couple of years until the club had to look for larger quarters. After looking at a number of old factories, supermarkets, and warehouses, they finally decided to buy the Senate Theater, and it was moving time again. The organ, incidentally, was one of the 12 largest ever built in the whole world, and it has 2,300 pipes, which had to be disassembled and carefully packed and marked for the move. In all, some 8,000 parts had to be fitted into seven or 800 boxes for the trip to the club's new home. This particular organ was specially built by Wurlitzer for the Fisher Theater when it opened 36 years ago last night on November 16, 1928. Some of its huge wooden pipes, like these, weigh between two and 300 pounds and its huge gleaming gold console was decorated with Mayan coachwork to harmonize with the decor of the Fisher, one of Detroit's gilded movie palaces of that era. In the pre-talking picture period, these organs, capable of producing the sound of any instrument, plus a wide assortment of percussion sound effects, supplied the accompaniment for feature motion pictures in the big deluxe movie palaces. During the moving, the huge console was stored in the lobby of its new home at the Senate. Narrow doors between the lobby and the main auditorium prevented the moving of it directly down to the stage, and so in late September of last year, the members assembled to move it around the outside of the theater and into one of the back exit doors. The console alone weighs a ton and a half, and it was sort of like uh, taking a stroll with an elephant on a leash. Some of the members trailed out behind, carrying the huge cable. Of course, turning a corner isn't easy when you're trying to guide a ton and a half of dead weight, but everything seems to be going smoothly, a tribute to the ingenuity that ordinary people can display 
when they have a fanatical devotion to a cause. Probably most of them are looking ahead in anticipation to the day when the work is all completed and they'll be able to sit down and enjoy the instrument's wondrous sound at the club's monthly concerts. They're on the final leg of the journey now as they bowl the huge console up and into the exit door. Ahead lies the gradual downhill slope of the auditorium floor. Inside, other members are hammering the final nails into a sturdy ramp, which will carry the console up onto the circular stage. Their work is soon put to the test, as with one final burst of energy, the crew moves it up onto the stage. And then a brief moment of exaltation, as this part of the job is completed. And it's back to more work. Those 3,000 wires have to be hooked up before they can hear that wonderful sound. Finally, the long months of work are nearing an end, and the devotion of the club members will be rewarded with the sound they love. The hole in the wall has been covered with an attractive grill, and the newly painted seats are inviting. At last, they can enjoy again the sound of the mighty Wurlitzer. <laughs> 